और एक्शन मूवी में खुश आमदीद कहते हैं अच्छा आज का जो है आई थिंक आज के थोड़ा टेक टेक्नोलॉजी टेक्नोलॉजी में है और ये है गलेक्सी जी फोर थ्री देखते हैं इस पर क्या वीडियो है This is Samsung's just announced Z Fold 3, and I spent some time with it. I'm going to show you how it's easily the greatest foldable phone ever made, with features that will make you want to take your current phone and burn it, but then also how it doesn't really make sense. So the very first thing you notice when you start using the Fold 3 is, good lord, this is a solid piece of equipment. You might remember the first Galaxy Fold. It was kind of revolutionary, but also not exactly structurally sound. Samsung massively improved on that with the Z Fold 2 last year, but I think this is the phone with which they finally delivered on their original premise. It might look familiar, but this phone is one smaller from almost every dimension and a whole 11 grams lighter. It has support for two SIM cards instead of one. All metal on the outside is now made of a new alloy called Armor Aluminium, which they're saying is the strongest material to ever go on a phone. Every hinge movement has been reinforced for snappiness and rigidity, and I'm impressed by how much it feels like a proper tablet when unfolded. It's the only foldable in the world to have proper water resistance, which is especially impressive given that here you've got to worry about not just two separate halves. But a hinge, which is purpose-built to have a gap in it. The front and back are now both covered in Gorilla Glass Victus, the toughest glass yet, and the inside panel has a new structure paired with a protective film that will apparently bring an 80% durability improvement. Fair play. I mean, that 80% number obviously is a best-case scenario, but even then, it's pretty clear that this design concept, this whole small screen on the front and main screen on the inside format, has been somewhat mastered. I do think they've lost a bit of character when compared to the S21 Ultra. Like, this design is such a statement. This one looks kind of generic. But do you know what? It's a folding phone. It's got enough character. We'll let it pass. And thanks to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. Plus, this is arguably the most advanced display setup you can get on a smartphone. Two panels, a 6.2-inch cover screen and a 7.6-inch Infinity Flex screen. Both sporting dynamic AMOLED 2x panels with a 120Hz refresh rate. And compared to last year, this inside display now has its selfie camera hidden under the screen. Yep, and it's now 29% brighter. Given that brightness was pretty much the only sore point with the Fold 2 screen, there's not much to complain about here. This hidden camera is not exactly invisible. It's actually really obvious when you're looking for it, but it blends just enough into what you're looking at that, providing it's in your peripheral vision, you can trick yourself into thinking this is just one uninterrupted screen. It's a really good panel, and I think it takes using it in person to fully clock the novelty of being able to have that in a form factor that can actually fit in your pocket. It's powerful: 12 gigs of RAM by default, 256 gigs of fast storage on the base model, and a Snapdragon 888 chip. But probably the most impressive aspect of this, more so than design or screen or power, is the software. There are so many subtle improvements since the first fold that the entire narrative has changed. This is no longer about just having a bigger screen to, well, make everything bigger. It's about being able to do more. Samsung's clearly gone to great lengths, both internally and with other companies like Google, Microsoft, Spotify, to make sure that when you're using this big inside screen, that you're squeezing every last bit of utility out of that extra real estate. News apps show more info than ever before. YouTube shows more thumbnails before you have to start scrolling. You can have two instances of the same app open at once now. I love how the web browser is starting to feel like a fully fledged computer one. I love that I have space for proper tabs up top, and how quickly I can open up a new tab without leaving the current one. And what I really respect about Samsung's approach here is that they know foldable phones are still new territory, but instead of locking down and controlling the experience as a result of it, they're instead inviting their users to just experiment with them. There's a group of settings called Labs where you can set how large you want the window to be for any app, so that even ones that aren't optimized for the unusual aspect ratio will still work as intended. You can configure how apps behave when it comes to multi-window multitasking. You can even use two apps stacked. On top of each other now, and this is more significant than it seems. I'll give you a weird example. Whenever I play the board game Scrabble, where you have to make words to get points, we always use two phones: one to be the timer phone for each person's turn, and one to check if the words we're actually making are real words. 
With this, you could just set a timer that can sit in the corner of your screen and comfortably use the rest of the panel for that word checker. There's just too much to talk about here. There's an improved taskbar. There's flex mode, which basically turns your one big screen into two separate screens. And this cover screen mirroring, which means any change that you make on your inside home screen will now be mapped to the cover screen just for consistency. And they've managed to do all of this stuff whilst effectively knocking off 200 pounds or euros off the price compared to last year's. Hopefully you're starting to catch my drift here. The fact that this is Samsung's third stab at the same formula means that this is easily the greatest foldable on the market right now. Samsung has worked out almost every single quirk, they've streamlined their production for lower costs, and because of that, if you're looking for a foldable, this is it. But, you knew there was gonna be a but. I think that this phone, and Samsung's foldable lineup in general, is a bit confused. And if you are enjoying this video, then a sub to the channel would be flipping fantastic. For example, the way that Samsung is pitching this Z Fold 3 is you can use it as a normal bar phone and simply open it if you need a larger experience. Okay, fine. But the fact that this phone costs significantly more than the Galaxy S21 Ultra, the fact that it's got the thickness and the weight of almost two phones, that it has a significantly smaller battery and a significantly worse camera system, all means that when you are using this phone in its cover screen mode, you're using just a really bad phone for the money. It's the equivalent of using like a $500 mid-ranger with what can only be described as an odd aspect ratio. Okay, so let's just use it in unfolded mode. Except this thing almost definitely does not have the battery capacity to sustain that. This is a tablet sized display, which now has a high refresh rate and 29% more brightness than last gen. But we have a smaller battery than not just the bar phones like the S21 Ultra, but also compared to last year's Z Fold 2. The point is, you can only ever use one of these screens at once, and you're making a huge, huge compromise to have the option of being able to transition between them. And I'm not even talking about this crease, which it probably hasn't gotten worse since the last phone, but it definitely hasn't gotten better. Or the fact that because this inside screen has to effectively be the size of two of these cover screens, it's a square. And there's still so much wasted space with media consumption. Let's not forget, for the price of this one phone, you could buy a Galaxy S21 Ultra, which is in a lot of ways more capable, plus an iPad, Galaxy Buds Live, 100 McDonald's cheeseburgers, and still have money left over. Over. I'm a growing lad, okay? <laughs> now, the angle that I thought Samsung were going to take, which would have actually given this phone a more clear purpose, was to make this fold the replacement for the Galaxy Note. See, when the Note first came onto the scene, it was a bold departure. It was drastically different to Samsung's other phones. But as the years have gone on, the S series and the Note series have practically merged, with the Notes just becoming slightly reskinned S phones with a stylus. It sounds like a problem until you realize that foldable phones completely embody everything that Note users have ever wanted. These are people who want huge screens, people who would actually take advantage of advanced productivity and multitasking features, people who want to be able to jot down notes and sign documents on their phone. This is it. Build an S Pen inside of this phone, swap the Galaxy Z Fold 3 5G name for the Galaxy Note Fold, or hell, even the Note Book. This phone actually is a book. It makes too much sense. But they didn't do that. What they've actually done is created two versions of the S Pen, a basic S Pen Fold Edition and the S Pen Pro. And for a limited time, you will get a Fold Edition included as part of your purchase of the phone. But, okay, I mean, first of all, this is a limited time offer. And after that, you will have to buy it separately. Secondly, the fact that it's separate means that you also have to use a special Samsung branded case to be able to keep it with you. Thirdly, if you want the Bluetooth features that we've got used to on past S Pens, you now have to spend more to get the S Pen Pro, which has its own battery inside of it. But then that doesn't fit in the case. It comes in its own separate sleeve like this, and it has its own USB port because you've got to charge it separately. The S Pen is such a great tool, but whose idea was this? Now, I don't want to dunk on some of the genuinely impressive improvements they pulled off here, but look, this new fold is 11 grams lighter than the last fold. Adding in a Galaxy Note style S Pen would literally cost three grams of weight. The fact that it's now a separate item and the fact that you now have to inconvenience yourself to use it just means that after the launch period, 80% of customers aren't even going to consider it. And that's a shame. And on the subject of identity crises, this is a 1600 pound device. So it's a phone for pros right? But is it? Is it?
If you follow smartphones closely, you'll have seen that a lot of the biggest improvements recently have come in the form of cameras, super high resolutions, large sensors, new forms of stabilization, incredible zooms, laser autofocus, all this stuff. The Z Fold 3 has none of it. Now, I'm not saying that this is a bad camera. In the time I've played with it, it produces decent results. They've adjusted the coating on the lenses such that it allows 4% more light in. And credit where due, the ability of a foldable to be able to use the rear cameras to be able to take selfies like this, very underrated. But the fact that this camera hardware is actually less capable than the base version of the Galaxy S20, which is a year and a half old phone that launched at half the price, doesn't exactly inspire me to recommend it. How much would it have cost them to swap that camera system to what we have on the S21 Ultra? 40 pounds, maybe? It's a bit like they've handcrafted the most elaborate possible three-tiered wedding cake, but then to save costs, used a supermarket ready-made mixture for the filling. Plus, you know that under-display camera, right? It's four megapixels, and you can tell. It's noticeably less good than the normal 10 megapixel one on the cover. Look, this is a selfie from the cover camera. This is a shot from the inside screen camera. It's not pretty, and I get that this thing enhances the inside display quality, but we shouldn't have a situation where one of the coolest things about your phone is something that you have to try not to use. It's a clear sign that the implementation has been rushed. Hopefully you get what I'm saying. The Z Fold 3 is looking like a really nice upgrade, but all these conflicting concepts just leave us in a really odd position. Because do I want to recommend this phone? Absolutely, it's so cool, but who would I actually recommend it to? Well, it would need to be a user who A, has very deep pockets, in both senses of the word, B, doesn't care too much about camera quality, C, is willing to also get and use Samsung's S Pen and the case to hold it, D, wants an even bigger screen than the already big screens on current flagships, and E, is happy keeping a power bank at the ready if wanting to properly utilize that bigger screen. Someone would have to be all these things before I decided, okay, yeah, the Z Fold 3, that's the phone for you. Here's what I think has happened. Samsung is expecting the foldable market to explode. As part of their event, they actually said, yeah, we're expecting demand to triple this year. And at the same time, Samsung is very aware that they're already leading this market. Yes, there's Huawei, but theirs has no Google Play services. Yes, there's Xiaomi, but they've only just released their first gen product while Samsung is out here dropping their third. And so I think Samsung's whole plan here is to just wait patiently for demand to blow up while they keep making tweaks to their existing concept and keep making exclusive partnerships with software companies to just make sure they keep themselves at the top. Foldables are so exciting and they could be so many things and given that, Samsung's playing it really safe. With the Fold 3, they have fixed a lot of the smaller issues, but they're so far ahead that they don't need to fix any of the more fundamental compromises or contradictions that come with this core design. And they can go at their own pace with these innovations. So, I would love to see more companies getting in on this and the progress that would come from that pressure. But for now, this is it, the new foldable king. Okay, at this point, I probably don't need to tell you what a VPN is. If you either want to browse the internet anonymously, change the location of your device to another country to watch TV shows from that country or avoid censorship, or even just escape data throttling from your service provider, then a VPN is the way to go. But then you're faced with the question of which one? And from what I've seen at least, there is no other VPN that's offering close to what Surfshark is. Unlimited number of users and 24 seven support for this kind of price. If you use the code BOSS, you get an 83% discount, which when combined with three months for free, puts the price at just $2.49 a month. I spend more on paper clips than that. Oh yeah, and it also has the option to remove ads and trackers while browsing. To check out some of the hottest inventions you've ever seen, click here. Or to see a really interesting up and coming operating system, click here. My name is Aaron, this is Mr. Who's the Boss, and I will catch you in the next one. कि अब बंदा कहाँ अपने पॉकेट में कैरियर करेगा सही है फीचर्स के हवाले से सही है और एक और चीज़ वीपीएन तो फ्री में भी मिल जाता है ओके थैंक यू